Hey, it's David Elder and today on Texas Eats, we're traveling all across the Lone Star State going to great restaurants you won't want to miss. Get ready for some spicy, authentic West African cuisine right here in the Alamo City. This is delicious. I love the flavor that's in here. And I'm so glad that you got to share your culture with me and show me how to eat like this. This is so fun. Plus, we're heating things up in the Texas Eats outdoor kitchen with the simple empanada recipe you can make at home. Look at the inside of that gooey, cheesy deliciousness. And we're digging into some of the best gorditas in San Antonio. Oh, the flavor on that. Oh, my goodness. I love how happy you are about all the food, too. <laughs> all that and more right now on Texas Eats. Our first stop on today's foodie adventure is on Broadway in San Antonio at a sandwich, pizza, and bagel shop. Let's go inside Wild Barley. Joining me now is the owner and operator out here at the restaurant, Mark Fogelsong. Thank you so much for having us out here, man. Thanks for coming. Now, we were visiting with you, oh my gosh, it was a couple years ago. You had the food truck, but now it's a brick and mortar here in San Antonio, and you guys are cranking out all the goods. How did all this get started? Well, I met my partner, Holland, back in college, 2008, and we began talking about this concept. And then we both went off and learned our respective industries and came back together about six years later and built the food truck and went through the pandemic running that, and then we got here uh, back in August and started renovating this building for our brewery. And you have two sandwich options right here for breakfast. Talk to me about this one right here. Yeah, so the Notorious PIG features some cured ham, some bacon, melted Gruyere, some tomatoes, onions, and between two eggs on whatever bagel you wanna choose. All right, that's the bite. Wow. This sandwich right here, what's going on in this one? Very traditional sandwich. The lox, you've got some lemon dill, cream cheese, some tomatoes and onions, and of course the smoked salmon yes. and capers. Yeah, the little capers are like hiding in there. Look at them. That's the bite. Oh, bro. Thank Get you. Tomorrow. The bagel sandwiches are delicious for breakfast. There's so many different options you can choose from the Notorious PIG. Now that's the sandwich though. This thing's got two eggs. It is massive. Messy, delicious, the lox, straightforward, delicious, traditional bagel bite. You can't go wrong. You can customize it, do it your way. This sandwich right here is more in the lunch area, right? Yeah, so the Rio Grande caters to the lunch crowd. So you got your fresh sourdough bread. Uh, we're smoking that turkey in house. You got some avocado, roasted red peppers, caramelized onions, and then some spinach and mayo to finish it off. My goodness. All right, check that out, the Rio Grande. This one looks awesome. Cheers. Salute. That's the bite. Oh, wow. That's a great sandwich, a wonderful bite. And you also have a salad in the front, something a little bit colorful, a little tasty. Over here, you have another salad. Talk to me about this one. Yeah, the Bo Diddley beets, we're roasting the beets, some blue cheese, some toasted pumpkin seeds on a bed of arugula and mixed greens, and then, of course, some house Italian dressing. All right, the Bo Diddley beets. <laughs> Cheers. Salud. That's the bite. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. The sandwiches are great for lunch. You can also get a salad. All the salads on the menu were created by the chef in the kitchen, the back of the house. De delicious. The one that we had out here, we had the caprese salad. We also had the beet salad. Now this one has the beets, the arugula on there, that house-made Italian dressing as well. You have some of the seeds on there and then chunks of blue cheese. You mix that all together, it is the perfect bite. pizzas. Talk to me about that. This is the native Texan, a uh, very traditional pizza. We've got the in-house barbecue sauce, as well as in-house smoked brisket, some pickled jalapenos, red onions, a little bit of cheddar, and a mozzarella provolone blend, all in the sourdough crust. Cheers to you. That's the bite. Salute. We Whoa. keep talking about our bagels, but our pizza's pretty damn good. That's a great pizza. <laughs> that is really good, man. Mm. This pizza has a wonderful body to it on that crust. It just has a great bite, good hold to it. And when you hold it up, it's not falling down or anything. So you know the crust is on point. It's that sourdough that they're using on all the other products, right? Then on the top, it has that barbecue flavor to it. it. Tastes just like something you would want coming out of Central Texas. There's different kinds of pizzas you can get on the menu. They're rotating about seasonally. So this is just a really cool spot.
They're not playing around out here. You can get the bagels, but they also have breakfast platters. You have sourdough pancakes. You also have the eggs, the hash, and a little bit of like salsa on the side over there. So many great things. Mark, thank you so much for having us out here. You guys, Wild Barley, now a brick and mortar here in San Antonio. Come enjoy yourself. Cheers again. Salute. The pizza is rocking, y'all. This is delicious. Now, we're headed to Houston for dry aged flaming ribeyes. Let's go inside Doris Metropolitan. Joining me now is Mauro Cisneros III. He is the beverage director out here at the restaurant. Thank you so much for having us. It's my pleasure. Thanks for coming. Right in front of us. I mean, this is the reason why people come out to the restaurant. You've got all the steaks right here on the board, plus side items and other entrees as well. But how did all of this get started? So we got our start in a butcher shop in Tel Aviv. We opened up our first steakhouse down in Costa Rica. And actually, they took a road trip uh, on their way to Miami to open another restaurant, got stuck in New Orleans, and never left. They fell in love <laughs> with the city. Um, ended up opening our first American steakhouse in New Orleans, in the French Quarter. And Houston being the sister city to New Orleans, it was kind of a natural transition to come over to Houston next. And it just boomed from there. You have a room in the back. You're actually dry aging steaks. And actually, when you come in as a guest, you can go in and see it. Talk to me about the different steaks that we have here on the platter. So our dry aged cuts are all bone-in cuts, and they're selected for that reason because it really takes full advantage of that moisture being pulled out of the bone. I want to dive into this one. The one in the middle here is the bone-in ribeye, and you can see it's a really nice cook on there. There's also pepper and salt on the side. What's special about that salt right there? So that's dehydrated red wine, and they infuse it into the kosher salt. The oxidation of the red wine actually brings out more of that beefy flavor. Nice. And so basically, you just take a little dab here, get a little tiny little bit of black pepper. Cheers. Cheers. All right, there you go, bone-in ribeye. So the sous vide process is really what's responsible for that tenderness that you're getting. Give me some love. Woo! The 27-day bone-in ribeye is so good, especially with the salt and the pepper on the side that you can dip into. It is cooked to perfection. That sous vide makes sure the inside is cooked exactly how you want it, grilled and then finished in the oven to make sure it is the perfect temp when it comes out. I mean, this thing is rocking. That's phenomenal. Yeah. The fat is rendered perfectly on that. We have Wagyu steaks, and we have a sample of that here on the board as well. Yeah, we have a little bit of uh, Japanese A5 Wagyu. That is the highest grade of Wagyu that can be exported from Japan. So what it is is just really, really finely marbleized meat. This one right here is the finished product. It's been sous vide. It's been grilled off. Now, on this one, too, are you going to do a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt on that one? Or are you no, just going to enjoy it? Honestly, this is one of my favorite cuts. I like it as unadulterated as possible. Okay. I recommend just diving right in. All right, we're going for it really then. Cool. Look at the inside. You can definitely tell just looking at these two, the difference on the two. Look at the marbling on the inside. This is incredible. All right, yeah. cheers to you. Cheers, this is the A5. Man. There's not too many places where you can go get Japanese A5 Wagyu steaks. Over here at Doris Metropolitan, you can get exactly that. These things are just butter. It's just meat butter. And on the inside, it's just marbled. It looks all white when it's raw like that. And then it has a little bit of pink sprinkled throughout. When it's cooked off, it is just fall apart, tender, melt in your mouth steak. You don't even need to add salt. You don't need to add pepper to it. All by itself, this is a whole different kind of steak experience. Give me some love on that one. That's awesome, right? Ooh, that's special. This is a, just a beautiful display of the different cuts that you have available. And I love that you set this thing on fire and you bring it out to the tables. Now, is that gonna add any more flavor to it or is it more for the show or is it Absolutely. both? The sage provides an aromatic element to it that really brings out the, the meat in there. Phenomenal. Now, these aren't the only items that you have on the menu, of course. You can come out here, you can get some side items, which we have over here. You have two other proteins here on the table. You have an octopus. What is inside this dish? The octopus has a lot going on, but it all comes together really well. So it's on a bed of tzatziki with some smoked heirloom tomatoes. They make this sauce called a preserved lemon that has a little tang that goes on there, a sous vide onion in the center, and then some uh, fresh cut okra that they sear. This one in front of us, you got a big old bone on there. <laughs> it just, I mean, it came right out of the sous vide pack, and it got like, the sauce got reduced. I mean, it was a little bit of grill action as well. What is this one? So this one's called Falls Off the Bone because quite literally we cannot serve it on the bone. <laughs> and it's a 24 hour sous vide and it's served on top of our root puree, which is one of our house favorites on there. It's just a bunch of root vegetables that have been pureed with some cream Ooh. to make like something a little, not, a little bit next level mashed potato, you know? Oh, 
Ooh, next level. I mean, you got me right there. Next level mashed potatoes. Oh my gosh, you don't really need much to pull this thing no, apart. It just kind of shreds. Mato, thank you so much for your time, brother. I appreciate you having us out here. You guys, Doris Metropolitan out here in Houston, a phenomenal joint. You really have Seriously. to enjoy all the different cuts of meat. I mean, you can go from A5, your traditional cuts, dry age. You can see everything when you walk in as well. Cheers to you, sir. Cheers. This is where it's at in Houston, y'all. I'm gonna take this one home. Yeah. Coming up later on Texas Eats, we're digging into some of the best gorditas in San Antonio. Tell oh, the flavor on that. Oh my goodness. I love how happy you are about all the food, too. <laughs> <laughs> and next on the show, we're headed to New Braunfels for some amazing Tex Mex. Oh my goodness. That's incredible. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. Welcome back to Texas Eats. We're traveling across a Lone Star State getting great food and pairing it with ice cold Shiner beer. And that's why we're here today in New Braunfels to go inside of a restaurant that's serving up interior Mexican cuisine plus Tex-Mex food and ice cold Shiner beer. Let's go inside La Coseca. Joining me now is the executive chef out here, Ovid Magana. Thank you so much for having us, man. Thank you, man. My pleasure. And right in front of us, we have some brunch items, starters. We even have some over-the-top fajitas. But how did all of this get started? So our business was opened in 2019. It's family-owned and operated. And we're focusing on more of an interior Mexican food. Nice. And that's what you can see. You can see some of the influences there. But this one right here, the fajitas, I mean, these aren't your standard fajitas, right? No, not at all. Let me tell you a little bit. It's a Wagyu steak with some Gulf Mexican shrimp and our beautiful compound butter. That steak, I guarantee, is going to melt in your mouth. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now, if you don't want steak, you also have another option right here, right? Yeah, so in case people want something a little bit lighter, we offer a vegetarian option, which comes with uh, carrots, grilled zucchini, squash, and some portobello mushrooms. I'm going to get this piece right here. It's calling my name. I'm going to dip it in some of this compound butter. Oh, Cheers. Yes, sir. Cheers. All right, the Wagyu beef fajitas. That's the bite. <laughs> Delicious. Oh, my goodness. The Wagyu beef fajitas are so tender. You dip it in that compound butter. You get some of the shrimp on there as well that you can add on. Plus, if you want to go full veggie, you can do that as well. Super delicious, lots of flavor. You have some of those fresh homemade tortillas as well that you can make a little taco out of. It is so good. This is a treat. Yes, sir. This has to be one of the most popular items on the menu. One of our best sellers by far. Oh, my goodness. You have a dish right here in the front, barbacoa. People are familiar with it, they know of it, but they get it like in tacos mainly. Of course. And this is a really fun presentation. Talk to me about that dish. Yeah, so this is more of a composed plate of our barbacoa. It's uh, also Wagyu beef that we use for that. Wow. And it's slowly braised with a pork demi on top. And then it gets put with our sweet corn puree on bottle, garnished with a little bit of crushed pistachios. And to serve it on the side, we like to serve this very fresh salad Toss with a lemon vinaigrette and some blister grates on top. Spectacular. Oh my goodness, that sounds incredible. Thank you. And look at this, look, you just like push into this. You don't even need to get your knife out. And look at that, it's just falling apart. Cheers to you. Cheers. Wagyu barbacoa. I never thought I would say that, but here it is. It looks fantastic. Bro. Wagyu barbacoa is not something you hear very often, but I tell you what, it is delicious. And out here at La Coseca, it comes out and it has a demi-glaze on the outside. It's braised, super tender, and on the bottom it has a corn puree. You mix that all together, you just smash it with your fork. You don't even need a knife. It is out of control. I've never had barbacoa that tender before. That Thank is you. really, really good. I love what's going on. You also have a Tex-Mex plate, right? Yes, sir. And this is kind of like a straightforward plate, right? Yes. So this is called our jefe, and this is served with a crispy beef taco, and then it has our two signature cheese and saladas, a little bit of refried beans, our cilantro lime rice, and you gotta have the queso, so we put a little queso on a cup for you. <laughs> this one right here, you have some seafood options on there. You got some oysters. Right here we have our char-grilled oysters, and we call them our oysters divorciados, so divorced, because we serve them both and half and half in different compound butters. So a little green, a little red, yeah. kind of both sides of the story. Yeah, I love that. Here you go, boss. Here we go. Mm. Oh. The char-grilled oysters are just loaded with flavor, especially when you have the two different sauces on there. You can go red, you can go green. Red one's got a little kick on it. So you have some of that Parmesan cheese on there. Get some of the bread as well. Just put it on there, all made in-house. So good, lots of texture and a lot of flavor. 
on the brunch menu right here, you got some French toast. Talk to me about this dish. Our French toast is on a house brioche, and it gets paired and topped with house-made granola, house-made cajeta, and some fresh berries on top. Here we go. Know? That's the bite. The French toast is prepared with their house-made brioche bread, and then you have the fresh berries, their granola that they're making in-house as well, and the cream on there. Mix that all together. When you come out for brunch, definitely the item that you gotta try, and wash it all down with an ice-cold cocktail or an ice-cold shiner. Now, you gotta make sure you save room, wash it all down with an ice-cold shiner. Go ahead and grab yours with me. You have it on draft, plus you got it in the bottles and cans. Cheers to you. La Closeca, you guys, out here in New Braunfels. It's delicious. Grab yourself an ice cold beer, get the starters, get the entrees, the Wagyu beef on all of it is just over the top delicious. Thank you so much for having us, man. Yes, sir, thank right. you. Welcome to Sandwiches with Sears. Now we're here at the outdoor kitchen with David Sears. And Good to be back, thank you. Know, you. <laughs> yes, and rumor on the street is David Sears makes the best sandwich oh. in the whole station. What are you making today? Uh, we're making peanut butter and banana <laughs> sandwich today. So the first thing you do is peel your banana. You're just gonna chop it up into the bowl like that. You've done this a couple of times. Once or twice. Look at that. A little peanut butter, and now watch this. Nis no way. Yeah. See, I've not seen that technique, yes. though. I'm go. very impressed Knock with how this out. came out. Look at that. All right, put it together, smash it. Smash All right. It's bit. a yep. peanut butter and banana, banana sandwich. sandwich on Wonder Bread. Cheers. Man, Box that up. Give me some love. There you go. I'm going to drink some milk for that one. You don't need to go anywhere for the recipe, y'all. This is Sandwiches with Sears. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here in the Heights in Houston to go inside of an authentic Chinese restaurant that's making soup dumplings, Peking duck, and all kinds of delicious dishes. Plus they got a full bar. Let's go inside Peony and Crane. Joining me now is Julie Jo. She is the owner out here at the restaurant. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, of course, my pleasure. And right in front of us, we have hits off the menu. We have soup, soup dumplings. We even have some protein dishes. How did all of this get started? I am an avid foodie, but it made me upset that there wasn't a place where I could get authentic Chinese. So I grew up half in China and um, half here, so I, I really know how it's supposed to be made. That's why I finally opened this place. I was very picky about how everything was made, so everything that you're eating today is handpicked by me. I love that so much. <laughs> and I want to start off this meal first with what's inside the little hidden containers here. You have soup dumplings. Yes. How are these prepared? So it looks very simple. You have the dough that's hand kneaded to maintain its chewiness. And then you have a bowl of filling and it looks so simple, but it has all of the flavors built into it, including the congealed soup that already is flavored. And it's made from pork broth that we cook overnight. Plus the filling with the meat makes that really unique umami flavor with that chewy dough on the outside. Okay, cheers to you. The soup dumplings, that's the bite. That is incredible. The soup dumplings are out of control. They're just a big flavor bomb. You have all that congealed soup that gets put inside of the dumpling itself. The dumpling, the soup, when it gets all steamed up, just melt in your mouth. It is a flavor explosion. It is delicious. And I want to jump over here because you also have the pork belly, the process of pouring it onto the Rice Krispies, it creates like a popping kind of effect, right? It does because the Rice Krispies, um, as hot as they are, once you pour on the hot pork belly, it makes this popping noise and it's, it's very satisfying to hear. <laughs> yeah. And look at that, I mean, just load it up with a sauce. Cheers to you. There's the fire. Oh my goodness. Mm. Oh my God. I want to jump over to the duck. What should the preparation be like? The Peking duck is a little difficult to make. It really is an art, and chefs are especially trained to make roast Peking duck. This is made with the duck skin perfectly unbroken. Yeah. You separate the skin from the meat, and then you spray air into it to separate the fat mm -hmm. from the meat and the skin, Right. so that when you roast it, all that fat drips down. So when you bite into it, there's no fat in between. That's where you get the crispy skin and the very soft 
and tender meat. Now you have little wraps that go with this as well, right? So how do we, we prepare do. this whole dish? Yeah, so these are very, very chewy wraps. You have some green onion and you have uh, cucumber and then you have the sweet sauce that goes with it. And look at this, I mean, just cooked beautifully. It's just glistening. You can see all that juiciness in there and the crispy skin. I'm gonna put my piece right on top. Now the sauce itself, what are the flavor notes that we're gonna be experiencing here? So this is just a, a very simple and clean sweet sauce okay. that all Peking duck should be eaten with when you're wrapping it or when you're sandwiching it. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> That's broke. the bite. <laughs> Oh, wow. Give me some love on that one. <laughs> the Peking duck is delicious, crispy skin, and then you have that juicy meat on there. You get some of those wraps, put some of the sauce on the bottom, those fresh veggies, some of that duck on there as well. Wrap it up and enjoy yourself. You have a lot of wraps that come with the meal. You have all that meat, so you can definitely share it if you want to. You are doing such a great job out here. I love all the different dishes. We also have some more traditional, uh, you have Sichuan style, uh, of course, different regions of China you have represented on the menu. This is a sneeze beef, right? You have the pepper around there. You have soup out here as well. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. Grab your wine over there. There's also a great bar program. Grab a cocktail, get a glass of wine. Peony and Crane here in the Heights in Houston. Delicious, authentic Chinese food. What do you want to get before you go out drinking, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Cheers. That is delicious. Come on out to Circle K for the holiday season and save some big bucks. You can get two 12 packs of soda when you get Big Red Dr. Pepper or Coca-Cola products and get one free. So you can get two flavors, you can get three of the same one, you can also get one free, right? So you can get Dr. Pepper, 7-Up, Big Red, Coca-Cola, Coke Zero, or Sprite. Goes great with different cocktails throughout the holiday season and it's just nice to have in case you want to just relax and drink an ice cold soda. Plus, when you're at Circle K, you can grab a Polar Pop, a Froster, or an iced coffee, one a day for only $8.99 a month. It is a fantastic deal. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here on the northwest side of San Antonio to go inside of a restaurant that's serving up authentic West African cuisine. Let's go inside Trice's Cafe and Lounge. Joining me now is Elsa. She is the owner and chef out here at the restaurant. And do me a favor, pronounce your full name for me because I can't say it. <laughs> Elsie Glasu Atsunawa. That's a beautiful name. Thank and you. thank you so much for having us out here. Thanks for coming. And right in front of us, we have some of the hits off the menu. We have fish, some goat, beef, chicken, a little bit of everything. Talk to me about the culture of the cuisine that you have here. So right here we have African cuisine, to be specific, West Africa. And we cook out of three nations in Africa. We cook from Ghana, Nigeria, and Cameroon. And everything, it smells incredible. I love, I mean, the spices that you're using, you can just smell when you're cooking in the kitchen as soon as you walk in. And I wanna talk first about what's going on in this bowl right here. I see some onions, and, and this, this is goat, goat correct? correct? Right, that's uh, asun, it's a goat meat, um, actually tossed with hot pepper, so it's quite spicy. Okay. And with onions, you just toast it in vegetable oil, you season it to your taste, and bang, you, bang. you got it. Bang. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. That's the bite. Oh. That's a little spicy. Yeah, we do customize the spice to the customer's need. So if you like it very spicy, you can get it as spicy as it can be, or we can tone it down for you. The way the goat is prepared, it has all this flavor in the inside. You have the skin on the outside that is nice chewy texture, and then the fat just melts in your mouth. This stuff is spicy though. Like I've taken a couple bites. <laughs> it's already like getting your lips going, but it's like the perfect amount of spice you want. You get a little piece of onion, you get some of the goat, and it is a great bite. And now we do have some drink over here as well, because I'm gonna have to take a sip, because it's a little spicy. Talk to me about what's going on with this drink. So this drink is called palm wine. It's made out of the palm tree, and it's important. You can only get it in Africa. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So this is a typical Nigerian dish and it's called a foruro. It's actually um, veggies which will be spinach and colored greens tossed in the, this uh, red bell pepper sauce. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, it's very nice. Delicious. And you need to add a protein to this if you'd like, and we actually added beef to this yes, one. Yes, there's beef in there. All right, so show me, how do we do this? Okay. Teach me how to do it. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> you basically just take um, a piece. Okay, take a piece. Like that. It sticks together. Okay, and you're kind of playing with it. You, yeah, you've done you, this before. Yeah, you want to mold it, just go take up your sauce. Okay, I'm gonna take some of the sauce. Oh, okay, I think I did it right. Here you go, cheers. cheers. That's the bite. Mm. Oh, that's very good. And you can eat with your hands. The Epo Riro is delicious. It has kind of this soupy texture to it. And then you have all the greens in there, the beef in the middle. You can pick any protein you want to go on there. You just get a little bit of whatever side item you get to make a little bit, kind of like a little bread. It's like a little dumpling kind of texture. You grab some of that in the bowl, put it all together, you go for it. It is delicious and it's a fun experience. This is delicious. I love the flavor that's in here. And I'm so glad that you got to share your culture with me and show me how to eat like this. This is so fun. So this is called jollof rice. It's popular in Africa, especially West Africa. But this is the popular jollof rice and trices that everybody likes. Most people will order this on the regular. And we serve this with chicken drumstick tossed in a tomato sauce that we usually call stew. So it's actually stewed and then a side of plantains. This is just rice, a little kick of spicy, not heavily spiced. So let's get some of the rice. The tomato. It has a little bit of, a, like, I like the spice on there. Mm -hmm. It's like a small little spice kick, but not like spicy, like it's actually hot. And then you have the sweet plantains have on the, the side. sweet plantains on the side. And so I'm gonna get some of the chicken here as well. Mm -hmm. That's the bite. Mm. Oh, this plate is wild. <laughs> oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. The jollof rice, one of the most popular dishes on the menu. It is so good. It takes three hours for that rice to reduce down and get all that flavor in there. You have the veggies. You also have some sweet plantains on the side. I chose to go with chicken as my protein on there, and I highly recommend you do the same. The sauce on the outside is incredible. The texture of the chicken. You just want to get a little bite of everything. Now, you can eat it all separate, or eat it all together. Either way you do it, it's going to be delicious. If you really want to try something different, expand your palate. Trisis out here, it is a great restaurant. Everybody's been awesome out here. So you come out here, try something a little bit more adventurous. Even the fish just looks fantastic. Try some palm wine. Cheers to you. Thank you for having us out here. Thank you, thank you. Come visit us. So don't go anywhere. More Texas Eats is coming up after the break. Now we're out here at the Jordan Ford dealership, and with me, as always, Mark Cross. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you, David. And who's here with us today? Oh, I've got Lindsay, I've got Chris, and I've got Josh, and we're so proud to have young people. You know, we're trying to set up our company for the next generation, so we've got a lot of opportunity for young people. Hi, I'm Lindsay. I'm the marketing manager and summer college internship coordinator. One reason I like working here is because the culture, everyone's really friendly. Hello, my name is Chris Beerling. I am the Quick Lane Service Advisor. One of the main reasons why I like working here is for the growth opportunities. Hi, my name is Joshua Hughes. I'm in new truck sales here at Jordan Ford. The reason I like to work here is because it's very family oriented. For people to get more information about internship programs, jobs, and all the vehicles out here on the lot, where do they go? Absolutely, David. JordanFord.com or they can just walk through the door. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here at the Outdoor Kitchen, and joining me here today, Chef Cesar Zapeda from Sangria on the Burg here in San Antonio. Thank you so much for being out here today. Love to be back, thank you for having me. And you know, it's a beautiful day out here, especially a great day to deep fry some food outside. And that's why you're gonna be showing us how to make some empanadas. Yep. And you're gonna show us how you fill them, right? What's the special mixture on there? So what's the first step to making these? Okay, so you have to roast off your pavanos. We put this on the grill, put it in a bag after so that humidity can kind of make it easy to clean. Like a Ziploc bag? Ziploc bag, easy, uh -huh. or a bowl with some saran wrap on top. Then you kind of hold the, the, the stem and look how easy that comes what? off. Yeah. Real easy. So just so like that, a, a little damp rag will exactly. do you. And then why don't you want that on there after you roast it? A little it? bitter, a little little bit bitter in there, and we like to have it nice and clean where we just have, have the flesh of the pavano. Okay. All right. We're gonna dice this up, get mm -hmm. it all nice and diced, uh, and then we're gonna make our little mixture. Today we use some shredded chicken. 
We use a uh, cheese blend, uh, cilantro, and our pobano. And you just mix that all up. Now, how much cheese? How, like, how, is there too much cheese that you I, can put I don't in? think there is too, ever too much cheese. <laughs> okay. I really don't. And the yep. chicken, too. How did you treat the chicken? Uh, we basically just, just boiled that off and shredded it. The beauty about empanadas, though, you can put whatever you have left over. Say you barbecue that leftover brisket, empanadas is perfect. Uh, but you got to give a little shell here, and these make it a lot easier. Um, in the frozen section, these are Goya product, um, but they're, they're just really nice little, um, little pastry shells. We're going to use a little bit of uh, water on the edge. This helps it help it stick. Mm -hmm. You kind of want to do it without the stuff on there. It makes it a little easier. Then we're going to take a little bit of your of your mix. I said I like cheese, so I try to put as much cheese in there in the center, but you don't want to put too, too much. About a tablespoon and a half is enough because you do want this to close. Okay, so we can't be like the people at Chipotle when you like you tell them you want everything on there and they, yeah, they can roll it crazy and everything. Those are professionals. <laughs> those, those are, are professionals. Yes. So pull the top, fold it over. Now you do not want any of your mixture to be on your uh, your seam there, because okay. that will make it open whenever you're frying it. Then you're gonna use your fork, just like grandma used to do. You're just kind of crimping it, right? You're making yep. sure that you have a nice seal on there. Yep. Not too hard where you push through, but enough where it does seal, and that water helps it seal as well. You have a fryer right here. What do you have your oil set to, and what kind of this oil are you using? This is around 320. We're using a uh, soybean oil. And then we just drop it right into the basket? Right in. You don't want to overcrowd up. Last, uh, put about four is max, but you want that oil to get all around. You say they cook super fast. You want the pastry golden brown. Uh, about halfway through in about a minute or two, you're going to flip. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about four minutes. You're not really cooking oh, wow. anything here. You're right. just crisping up that, that pastry. I mean, it's very quick. Very quick. And it's fun. You can get kids involved. They can have you like, you have a little assembly line going in the exactly. kitchen. My son would love to be a part of this process. Now, you could fill it with anything. I love the technique that you use here today. I mean, straightforward. Now, you do have some accoutrement on the side, right? You got a sauce on top. You also have a sauce you're putting on the bottom of the yeah. plate. Talk to me about those two. Okay, we are a salsa verde. Obviously, any sauce that you, that you like to make. On top is a little crema, crema agria, and cilantro. But garnish it whatever you whatever whatever you're doing. If, if it's beef to a sauce that works really good with beef, it's pork. Sauce goes really well with pork. This is what we do with sang, uh, sangria, and we do this on our dinner menu. Fantastic. So we just showed you right now how you can make this at home. If you don't want to make this, you can go to Sangria on the Berg and they'll make it for you out there as well. Now we got to give it a bite. And look how beautiful the golden texture is on the outside. And you can hear that crunch right when you're cutting into it. I'm just going to go hands on. I want to crack into this guy. Look at the inside of that gooey, cheesy deliciousness. You have the sauce on the bottom, yep. cream on top. Chef, thank you so much for being out here. Absolutely. More information, follow the link on the screen. Cheers to you, Chef. Cheers. Cheers. Get out of here, bro. That's delicious. Mm. So tasty. Thanks to our friends at the Lone Star Barbecue Pro Shop for supplying us with everything that we need to get grilling and smoking out here. And if you want to barbecue like a pro, just go check them out. They're in Lotus. You have all their information on the screen right here. You can get all kinds of seasoning, sauces, cast iron pans, everything you need to be a professional in your own backyard. Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're here in San Antonio, just north of downtown, to go inside of a restaurant that's serving up sopes, flautas, and gorditas. Let's go inside Gorditas Vitorion. Joining me now is the manager and the owner's daughter out here at the restaurant, Leslie Mota. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for coming. It's in the name, the gorditas. They're right in front of us. But talk to me about the restaurant. I mean, how did all of this get started? So my grandma used to do gorditas all the time. She had always had this dream of having a restaurant, something it's new in here, because you don't usually see this food. And it actually went really good. It took off, and the community loves yeah. it, right? And I want to start right here, because these gorditas look out of control. So talk to me about this one. What's inside of it, and what is it? made out of. So that one is the rajas con queso. Us in Torreón, Coahuila, we eat them just how they are. We don't put lettuce, we don't put tomato. That's okay. just... This is it. This yeah, is how this you do it. it. But you do have a red and green salsa here. Yeah. Are these made in-house? Yes. Okay, so the red one, a little spicy? Yes. <laughs> oh, you're like, yes, yes. Yes. All right, I'm going to put a little bit on top. There we go. That's the bite. Oh, wow. Spice it, it up. Up. It was a little spicy. 
the gorditas with the cheese on the inside with the corn masa. I mean, absolutely delicious. It's just ooey gooey goodness. And you have all that crunchy exterior on the outside. So it's a good body. They're not gonna fall apart. You can add as much sauce on the inside as you want. It's a great flavor. Is this one flour? Yes. And what's inside of it? That one is the chicharrón prensado. And actually, that's something people really love. Oh, I bet. This just looks like loaded up with flavor. Now, let's try the green one. Yeah, this one's really good <laughs> with the green one. Cheers. Yeah. The chicharrón prensado with the green salsa and the flour gordita. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, the flavor it. on that. Oh, my goodness. Mmm. One of my favorite bites was the flour gordita with the chicharron prensado on the inside. It is so good, so much flavor. I mean, it's just juicy. You can tell they just let that meat just simmer for hours and it has all that salsa in the inside. Now you can add green, add red salsa to it, do whatever you want to do, but you don't even need it. Just eat it the way it comes. This one right here, what we got going on on the inside and what's the masa made out of? It's uh, kind of like the first ones, but on this ones we actually put them on the grill. It makes them like more crispy and oh, people okay. really like that. And you actually have a specific name for that style, right? Yes, they're gorditas al carbón. On this one we have the carne con chile de res. Here we go, that's the bite. Okay. Oh, wow. Right? Mm. Makes you do a little food dance with that. One of the gorditas that you don't need any sauce whatsoever, don't even think about it, because it's already got a little bit of spice to it. The carne con chile is so good. Great flavor on the inside. But then what I highly recommend is you get the gorditas and you get them back on the grill. It's called al carbon. It gives it a little more crunchy texture on the outside, a little more bite, a little more crunch, whole lot of flavor. Now, something that's that's just a little bit special to you guys out here. I mean, these are huge sopas out there. So what's on the inside of these ones? Okay, so this one, it's the deshebrada, which is just shredded beef, but um, it really has a good flavor. Uh -huh. And the other one, it's the picadillo. Oh, I love picadillo. And yeah, yes. they're really good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go for the picadillo one. You wanna go for the shredded beef? Okay, yes. I'm gonna pick it up. Cheers. Cheers. And we got a little bit of beans on the bottom. That's the bite. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mario? Elbow. <laughs> That's delicious. Mm -hmm. The sopas are huge. I mean, these things are like big enough where you can just hold it with your hand like that. It's like a big disc. And then it has a little lip to it, beans on the bottom, choice of meat on top. And then you have the lettuce, you have the sour cream, the tomatoes, everything built on top of that. I mean, but these things are gonna fill you up. You need like one, you get two if you're feeling really hungry. So you have flautas and these things are just loaded up. Yeah. What's on the inside? So we have a mixed one, which is uh, one beef, one chicken, one beans, one potato, and one requesón. These things are like loaded up and they're huge. You want to grab one? Cheers. Cheers. There you go. This is the flautas. Let's see which one I got. Mm. Oh, wow. When you get the flautas out here, I highly recommend getting the plate that has five of the different flavors on there. Plus, you get some veggies on there, a little bit of tomato sauce, and then you can add some green and the red salsa on top as well. A little bit of lemon juice goes a long way. You get that crunch on there. You get to try a little bit of everything, but the shredded beef is out of control. I love how happy you are about all the food, too. <laughs> I just like, love them. Yes, I mean, you grew up with this. Yes. Because it's like people sharing a part of your culture and a part mm -hmm. of your family. We just love seeing how people eat them. <laughs> it's really good. It's like we're doing it right, you know? That's beautiful. Here you go. Cheers to you, Leslie. Thank you Cheers. so much for having us Thank out here. Thank you. Y'all, this is it. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Texas Eats will be right back. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Texas Eats. And to get more information and a map on all the restaurants that you've seen on today's show, just go to our website, ksat.com slash Texas Eats. And to get more information, of course, you can follow us online at Texas Eats TV on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And don't forget to join us every Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning right here on KSAT 12, because this is how Texas Eats.